Hey everyone, welcome back to the Wolfstones vlog. It is Will here. Um, I thought I would talk about the Man Booker long list this week. Seeing as it's such an interesting long list, I think there's been a lot of chatter about it because there's quite a wide range of books on there. Uh, there's genre fiction in the form of Belinda Bauer's Snap. Uh, there was a graphic novel, of course, for the first time with Sabrina by Nick Donasso. I mentioned that book previously, didn't I? I said this book's going to win prizes. Maybe this will be the prize, maybe it won't. Uh, but it's certainly worth noting that it's the first time a graphic novel's appeared on the Man Booker long list. Um, if you haven't seen that video, then if you're watching on YouTube, a link will have just popped up above my head. If you're not watching on YouTube, then go to it now. Find the Waterstones channel uh, and check the vlog playlist and you'll see me on there somewhere talking about Sabrina. It's an absolutely amazing, amazing book. Um, there's even genre defying uh, fiction on the Man Booker Long List in the form of The Long Take by Robin Robertson. Um, it's, it's written in, in, in verse, sort of a narrative noir. It's very difficult to describe uh, that book, but very interesting nonetheless. Um, there are established names on there, like Michael Ondaatje's new novel, Warlight. He, of course, recently won the uh, Golden Man Booker. Um, that is definitely on my to-be-read pile. Uh, there are younger writers like um, Sally Rooney. This is her new novel, Normal People. A lot of people will have read Conversations with Friends. Um, do stay tuned on our channels because I will be having a chat with Sally Rooney about her new book, Normal People, uh, at some point in the near future. Um, we have, of course, already mentioned some of the Man Booker Long List on our vlog already. Um, a few weeks ago, Ashling mentioned The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh. She absolutely loved that book, said it was uh, probably her book of the year. Again, a link will have popped up above my head if you're watching on YouTube, uh, and if you're not, then uh, you'll be able to see Ashling's thoughts on that book over there. And uh, I had previously mentioned The Overstory by Richard Powers, which I absolutely loved. Again, stay tuned. I will be doing an interview with Richard next week, which should be up on our channels fairly soon. Um, he is a fascinating man, so I'm very excited and slightly terrified uh, to speak to him about this book uh, and hopefully about some of his others too. Um, I haven't read the entire long list, of course. Um, I have uh, some on the list that I definitely want to read. The first of those is this one here, Washington Black by S.E. Duggan, which I am very excited by, not only because it's a completely gorgeous book, uh, as you can see, lots of lovely shiny gold on there, um, but I read and loved her previous novel, Half-Blood Blues. Um, I think she's a fantastic writer. Uh, this is another piece of historical fiction, which I don't normally go for, but she's just damn good at it, so I'm just going to have to do that. Um, and Daisy Johnson, whose story collection, Fen, I read and loved um, a couple of years ago, um, or maybe even just a year ago. Uh, this is her debut novel, Everything Under. She writes these fantastic... Um, stories that sort of play with boundaries and blur them and, and have this kind of slightly magical quality to them. Um, so if that sounds like your bag, um, then she's definitely a writer to look out for. Uh, but as I said, a very wide ranging long list and I think there's lots in there to appeal to different types of readers and I think that's why it's been engaging people. Um, and there's a few things to sort of challenge you as well if you're a reader that likes to, to sort of challenge yourself and, and to find a different type of reading experience. Um, I suppose one of the biggest stories has been the, the popularity of, of Sabrina by Nick Donasso. Um, poor old Grant Books struggling to maintain enough copies in shops to meet demand. Um, they are printing away furiously. Of course, it's a colour uh, book, and so it requires a much more complicated printing process than just um, whacking out black and white books. So I do really, really recommend it, but it's obviously shone a light on graphic novels in general. Um, and I helped to contribute to a... Uh, piece on the Waterstones website which is a list of 12 graphic novels that might help you get started if you've never read one before and I, I, I say this because um, I think it was 2001 when Chris Ware's Jimmy Corrigan won the Guardian First Book Award and that was the first graphic novel I'd ever read I had never read one before I'd never had any interest in reading them before and it blew my mind and it got me very excited about the possibilities of what graphic fiction can do and when it's really exciting for me is when it does something that standard literary fiction cannot do. Um, and I think one of the areas in which graphic novels can really excel is when they look at mental health. And this is because what they can do is to illustrate through the pictures something about that condition, whatever it might be, whether it's the way that somebody sees themselves or the way the world sees them or the experience of a mental health problem or even a physical problem. And I'm thinking here of books like um, Epileptic by David B, which is an amazing graphic memoir about his brother's epilepsy in, in France in the late 60s, early 70s, um, which has this stunning pictorial sort of visualisation of what epilepsy feels like to the sufferer. Um, it's an absolutely incredible book. Uh, there's another one called Lighter Than My Shadow, which is all about um, anorexia, it's about eating disorders, and that's brilliant at showing you as the reader what that feels like for the person who's suffering from that condition. 
Um, there are so many. There's a, a book called The Now of Brown by Glyn Dillon, which features a character who suffers from obsessive, com com obsessive compulsive disorder. And it shows really clearly the reality of what that is. I think that's one of those conditions where we think we know what that's like. And we think of sort of obsessive hand washing and stuff like that. And it's really not that at all. And, and the book shows brilliantly um, how that character is, is dealing with that condition and what the world looks like to them as a result of it. Um, and uh, that's published by Self Made Hero. And I wanted to mention another one of their books, which similarly illustrates uh, a mental health condition. Um, the book is called Tumult. Um, it is by John Harris Dunning and Michael Kennedy. And as you can see on the cover here, this is... Uh, an illustration, which is one of the characters who has um, multiple personalities, and the the book itself is it sort of reads like a like a thriller or a sort of a noir or or a sort of a mystery spy novel or something. Um, it has that kind of narrative thrust to it, but also, as I say, through the illustrations, it gives a really brilliant depiction of um, multiple personality disorder. Um, I absolutely loved this book. It was very, very atmospheric. It's got these very sort of stark, um, uh, starkly colorized illustrations. I'll try and flick through a, a few and, and show you what it looks like inside. Um, and yeah, really, really enjoyable. And as I say, brilliant at depicting that, that condition. And another book I want to mention before I finish up is not out yet, but will be out soon. And I'm mentioning it because it has some of the most amazing illustrations that I have seen in a graphic novel for years. Um, the book is called Square Eyes by Millen Jones. It's um, going to be coming out, I think, in September. Um, and it looks at a sort of near future where uh, reality is not all that it seems. And it has these amazing illustrations. I'm almost loath to try and flick through the book to you because it won't really show them off brilliantly. I will try and flash up some images. But it has this kind of augmented reality feel to it. And what they've done with the illustrations is to sort of to show this layering of reality through the different colours and the different things that are used. It is such an amazing achievement, not only in the sort of creation of it, but in the production of the book itself. It's another stunning bit of production from Jonathan Cape. Um, so yeah, I would really, really recommend that if you are fully into your graphic novels, then this is one that you will definitely want to have on your list. So I apologise again for, you know, starting off talking about the man book list and then ending up falling into one of my favorite topics which is graphic novels but hey it's my vlog i'll do what i want um that's all for me this week um please join us again next week for more fantastic book recommendations uh but for now if you want to know any more about the man book along list there is a link in this video's description that will take you to the waterstones website which has got all of the books there and more information about them um, and as i say if you want more information about graphic novels to help you get started and get you hooked as i clearly am there's a link below for that article too. Uh, I will see you very soon. Take care.